Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we are going to review the higher time frame levels and the week ahead for the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and <clears throat> maybe Euro, maybe the maybe um, maybe crude oil, maybe the dollar index. Um, we're going to start here with the S&P 500. My name is Reese. I am an apprentice of Michael Huddleston, our inner circle trader. You can find him on YouTube. He also did an, an analysis today, and um, it is important that you go watch him. Um, I'm only an apprentice. I am not the mentor. Okay, so guys, we start out here on the S&P 500 weekly chart, and we can see immediately that the ES found resistance up here at this weekly volume imbalance and started trading down last week. So last week was a bearish candle that ended right about at the mean threshold, meaning the midpoint of the prior candle. Um, in, my, in my opinion, uh, and what ICT has said is that he is not convinced just looking at the weekly chart that this thing is done going higher. And I understand that perspective. Um, it would it would be normal for price to come in and work into this inefficiently delivered price okay so from a weekly perspective I would say where price is where it closed the mean at the mean threshold of the last up close candle if we take let's say an order block standard deviation projection from the last week's up close candle and we take that let's see if we take that to a half standard deviation see if that level that we get makes sense yeah so a half standard deviation would take us up to 45 62 and three quarters and you notice that that would work into our liquidity void here on the left and work into our weekly volume imbalance so from a purely ICT perspective non-biased perspective price should want to trade up through into this weekly volume imbalance uh, probably to a half standard deviation of the last up close candle that we made. Um, that being said, on the weekly time frame, what would be kind of the bearish scenario? Well, we have an old volume imbalance here that you can see that price traded back into and found a support. Now, I think that the stronger pull or draw on liquidity is probably higher, okay, up to that 45.62 three quarters. That being said, price might also want to come down and reclaim that volume imbalance. But what does it mean to reclaim a volume imbalance? It means that it's traded to it multiple times, okay, more than once. All things being equal, you would expect price to go into liquidity and go into that untraded weekly volume imbalance, but you need to be aware of the downside risk as well. All right, let's move down here to the daily chart and you can see that weekly volume imbalance above here's we're on the uh, ES daily chart higher time frame analysis you can see that price came up above a prior high swept it and turned lower okay why is that a sweep and not a run? Because it only went a couple ticks higher and then it turned down. Now, from a daily perspective, what would be our, let's start with a bullish scenario. Well, number one, guys, we got a big inefficiency above price, okay? Number two, there is gonna be liquidity above these highs. So there's liquidity in their inefficiencies, inefficient, inefficiency reasons to believe that price could turn around and go back higher, okay? Now, let's talk about from uh, like from where it might turn. You know, we do have this daily volume imbalance that we're trading back into. Price did find support in it once. Uh, typically, I found that price does like to trade through these, so I'm kind of imagining that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, if we do have a bullish week, uh, Sunday and Monday is probably going to trade down. Uh, that if you know your weekly profiles, you know that if you're going to have a bullish week, most likely the low of the week, the power of three accumulation manipulation distribution concept um, that comes in on Sunday Monday or Tuesday should definitely come in by Wednesday guys um, but probably Tuesday most likely so um, 
With that being said, let's talk about the bearish scenario. So this could be a, a final sweep into liquidity to turn back down, reclaim this BISI down here. Okay, so reclaim that. That's a likely scenario. Also, guys, you'll notice that we are inefficient lower. Okay, we have a BISI down there. Um, we also have a mean threshold of an order block down here. We have, an, we have a SIBI down here. Okay, price has not really formed a candle other than this SIBI down here, and so you would expect that price at some point would want to come down to 4,222 4, halves. So there are some draws lower. Okay, they're daily draws. I don't think they're as strong as the draws to the upside. Right now, you'll notice that we're sitting right in the middle of the range. Okay, so it's very difficult for me to say what exactly the draw on liquidity is. I kind of need, remember we talked about waiting, I kind of need more information here, guys. I mean, we're sitting literally in the, in the middle of this range. Gun to my head, I think that this thing probably trades down and then back up. Okay, that is what I think. We are going to probably come in and work into that weekly volume imbalance on the uh, ES. All right, guys. Um, but we do have inefficiencies lower. So all things being equal, I'm kind of in equipose right now. I don't really know. But you know, I would give it like 55, 60% that it might go higher. So I know that was a very non-committal analysis, guys. But how am I supposed to commit with this? It's very difficult to commit with that. We have liquidity pools above, and we have liquidity, sorry, above and below. It was very difficult to commit to that. Now, I will tell you this, guys. Three pushes into liquidity is common. That's a three drives pattern. So like this, and then back down. That's called a three drives pattern. And you would, you, know, you would expect price to be able to do that. Okay, guys. Second market that we're going to analyze from a higher time frame perspective is going to be the NASDAQ, guys. Um, it's very similar on the NASDAQ. Uh, this black candle ended right the week of July 4th right at the mean threshold of this green up candle. If price is to turn higher, it's like a half standard deviation projection, take us to 15,638. Okay, Basically, price would turn around, come up here, and then probably back down. I think that's the most likely scenario. At this point, uh, I know that I've said in another video that it looks like the NASDAQ's put in a long-term high, and after listening to Michael's video, I'm not so sure about that, okay? Now guys, my opinion changes with new information, so you can't fault me for changing my opinion on day trading. Like, that's how it works, guys. Um, sorry, I mean, it's how, it's, it's how it works. Like, I, I can't read the future. So, anyways, we're down here on a daily chart on the NASDAQ, and you can see that price traded back into this BISI. We've now traded through it. Okay, so kind of two scenarios here. We could trade back up to it, find resistance there, and go lower. That's kind of scenario number one. The other thing we could do with this BISI we just formed is we trade down, we trade back through it, invert it, then, and go higher, like that, okay? These inefficiencies are dynamic support and resistance, guys. Um, you won't always know right away, especially on a higher time frame like this, you know, what, what exactly does price want to do? You know, we've traded through the BISI now, and you would expect that price, having re-delivered it, it, would want to trade back up and rebalance it. You would expect that, okay? If we are to have a bullish week on the NASDAQ, remember your weekly profiles. Our low would probably come in Monday or Tuesday, and then power of three, we trade higher for the week, okay? So Monday or Tuesday, we put in the low, and then we start trading higher if we were to have a bullish week. Um, last week, I think I did mention trading back down uh, without moving very far, and of course, that's what we did. Um, but now, again, the NASDAQ is very similar to the ES. I mean, we're right in the middle of the range, guys. We're right in the middle of the range. I've reason to believe that the NASDAQ really hasn't shown... I'm not convinced at this point. I know I've said it in a prior video. I know that. I'm not 
totally convinced that's a long-term high. Uh, there is a chance that it is, though, of course. So there's really not a whole lot for me to work with. We are working in a busy, and you want, let me just tell you, all right, the best analysis that I can give you, the best proactive analysis I can give you rather than just giving you a prediction, watch how price treats that buy side inbound sell side inefficiency. Okay, and what are you looking for? We've traded through it. Now, do we trade back to it and resistance? Or do we trade through it and support? Does that make sense, guys? It's dynamic support and resistance. So watch for Sunday, Monday's trading. How are we going to trade in this buy side inbound sell side inefficiency? Because other, you know, before the before it happens, you really don't know. Uh, that's why I can't I can't afford to trade on a daily time frame because I can't wait that long to know. So I'm pretty tired, guys. Uh, I'm actually just um, going to going to leave it at that. Um, I would say that between the ES and the Nasdaq, I'm leaning higher on both. With the Nasdaq, I would be watching how it handles this uh, BISI. I'd be watching watching to see how it wants to treat that going in the future. With the ES, I would say the same thing. You see the BISI right here. All right. Do we want to trade through it like that, or do we want to trade back up through it like that? And guys, I really don't have a definitive answer. I can tell you that it's probably higher. Probably higher still. But I don't know that for a fact. Okay, guys. With all that being said, um, we will talk to you soon. Bye.